George, the belief of many physicists is that ultimately physics can explain everything in terms of uh, very fundamental things in the standard model, maybe some things in cosmology. Uh, the claim uh, that has been growing recently is that in order to explain how everything works, you need this concept of emergence. It's yeah. not just a pleasant uh, term, a metaphoric term, but there's something deep and fundamental about yeah. it. You're yeah. one of the proponents of it. Um, I need to understand. Okay, well, let's ask the following question. If we knew everything about what was the state of the universe at the time of the last scattering of the cosmic microwave okay. background from matter, which is uh, basically 14 billion years ago, could you predict what you and I are saying to each other today from that data? Right. And um, some of the strong uh, phys physicalists um, believe that that would be the case. In fact, I'm having a debate about that at this very moment <laughs> with someone at the meeting that we are at. Um, I think it's absolutely clear that there isn't remotely possible this would be the case because the fluctuations on the surface of last scattering, if you believe standard cosmology, are random Gaussian fluctuations. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now, out of that, emergence has taken place over time of animals, uh, human beings are able to think, and human beings then can discuss and produce books like Einstein's uh, theory of relativity, uh, well, like Einstein's theory of relative paper in 1915, Darwin's book on the origin of the species. Okay. Now, those books contain logical argumentation. There is no way that that logical argumentation was implied in any sense by that data on the cosmic microwave background surface. Something has happened between there and there which has led to that log logical argumentation appearing in the real world, which it undoubtedly has done. Okay, now what I can do, I mean, on its surface, that's correct. Uh, well, but what I can do is I can draw a picture that can show an evolutionary picture, and then it, it, would, it would develop the nervous system and the brain. That was yeah. my old field, and yeah. I could describe that. Yeah. And, and I have a brain, and then the output of the brain, and then you have interactions between brains and communities, and yeah, well, uh, yeah, I, can, I can give a story. Yes, but the, the, the physics does not come into that story in any way except facilitating. What, what you're, you're bringing in a Darwinian picture. No physics book has got Darwin's law as a law of sure. physics. Uh, no sure. physics book has got a law, has got the, the Hodg Hodgkin-Huxley equations as a law of physics. They are emergent that's, that's laws. That's for the nerve impulse. I, yeah. I, 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 I'd certainly agree with that. But uh, uh, those rules or laws or understandings came out of a, a mechanism of the brain that, so, uh, that somebody came up with. And, and in some ultimate uh, analytical sense, and maybe a billion years from now, I don't know how long it would take, uh, you could describe how those ideas came in terms of something in the physical world. That's the argument. You, you can get down to do that. Unless the claim is that uh, at, at some levels, there is something that is absolutely uh, non-reducible to the, the physical. The, the claim is that through the, some of the processes you indicated, many of which are not physical, although they're relied by the physics, brains came into being which are able to carry out logical argumentation as an argumentation at the psychological level. Yes, I, I, I agree with that. And that argumentation is what leads to, for instance, e to the i pi plus one is equal to yeah. zero being written down on a you, piece you of paper. The physics knows absolutely nothing about that. You have to have the emergence of the possibility of logical argumentation to take place. That logical argumentation then has the possibility of controlling what appears okay. so, on so, a piece okay. of paper. So how does it control it? Uh, it controls it by um, basically being realized in micro uh, structure of the brain and then through to our, uh, to our oh, muscles. Okay, <laughs> okay but... But uh, you're not requiring anything um, of a non-physical nature here at this point, I'm, or are you? I am. An idea is a non-physical thing. Okay, I, An idea is realized in the brain, but the idea itself is not a physical thing. Oh, okay. Now, everything we see around us here, basically, except for the trees, was designed by the human mind. Right. Okay. So the mind is causally effective and thoughts are causally effective, but a thought is not a physical thing. It's realized in a physical way, but it is not of itself a physical yeah. thing. I, I, and that's sort of a property dualism kind of a thought. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, but uh, it, 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 ultimately, even a property dualist is, is, is not really a dualist because they believe that the only thing that it really exists is the physical world. The idea exists and it, and it, and it has its own validity, but it is, it is only uh, uh, realized because of the physical things going on below. I mean, there's no, if there's nothing else, I, I just, unless, unless, unless you're saying that the laws of physics, when they get to a certain level, create things that in principle can never be understood by the, uh, the, uh, the microphysics alone. Well, it can't be understood. You can't understand e to the i pi plus one is equal to zero in terms of Maxwell's equation interacting electrons. I think that's pretty obvious. You can't understand it at that level. Uh, I, 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 if, it, and it, you can't understand that at that level. That that's right. But ultimately, that it, it, it's that's the only way it's realized in not terms that, of not, that is the way it's realized. Yes. So you've got multiple levels. You've got the 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 the, 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 the atomic level. You've got yeah, the molecular right, right, level. Right, right, you've got right, the right, systems right, level. Right. All of these are simultaneously causation is taking place simultaneously in all of them, in such a way that the logical thing can be worked out, but it's the logic which is driving what happens. It's the physics which is enables it to happen, but the logic is deciding the outcome. So, I mean, so you have what would be downward causation. Downward realization. Is downward re realization. So what's the difference between causation and realization? You didn't like my word causation. I've been persuaded recently, different from what I've written about before, that causation is always horizontal, uh -huh, uh -huh. emergence is vertical, and realization is downwards. Oh yeah, that, that I, I, I can understand that, um, but I'm 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 just trying to think. Does that does that get does that get me where where you want to get me? Well, uh, uh, <laughs> what what is useful as a computer is an analog, and when a computer, um, for instance, sorts a list of names. You're, you're, yeah, a computer's a good analogy. Yeah. But maybe so. Okay. You, yeah. you feed in a, a a program at the top. And an algorithm in the program is... Yes, is, yes. Okay, that algorithm is changed down through a series of virtual machines to the bottom level by compilers and interpreters. And that's the machine language at, at the, the bottom. the machine language it does it, and then it goes up again. And what you fed in at the top results in the, 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 the list being printed out. The electrons flowing through the gates enable it to happen, but it's the algorithm which has decided what will in fact happen. And But the algorithm is represented ultimately in, in terms of the of, of the uh, of, of transistors and, and correct and, and at this level research. it's it's the laws of its Maxwell's equations and Newton's yeah, yeah. equations at this level but at this level it is the logic of the um, of the algorithm which is deciding what will happen at that level and ultimately it's that which decides which electrons will flow through which gates at the bottom level oh, okay so when it decides which which uh, 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 it, it does, but the only way it does it is through other kinds of, uh, of uh, electrical impulses. Yeah, so the whole thing is happening simultaneously yeah, at yeah, all yeah. of these levels. Yeah. And the question which, which is put by some of the people looking at this is, it's, it's the top level decides what will be done and the lower levels carry out the work. Okay, so uh, let, me, let me ask this question, and this is an emergence question. Uh, uh, let me give you an example of what I think is emergence that is explainable. So we know the... H2O is water. If I gave you some gas of hydrogen, gas yeah. of, uh, of, of, uh, of uh, oxygen and hydrogen, and uh, gave you, you can analyze those things, and then you put it together, and then could, could you ever predict that, that if you got a lot of it together, it would be wet? No, the answer is no, you can't. This is one of the problems with which... Oh, okay, so I, I think there are people who said you can. Well, all right, let me, let me step because back you, a little you, bit. You, when you know that the angle between the hydrogen and the oxygen, then you can put a lot together, you can see how they would slip and how wetness could occur. It, there, there is a great problem in deriving the macro properties of waters from the micro properties. But, but all right, let, no let, me, question. let me give you the, the answer perhaps that it does. But let me make the following statement. By the time you've done that, the hydrogen atom no longer exists as a hydrogen atom. Right. It only exists as a water molecule. So the lower level no longer exists as the individual entities. They've got incorporated in higher level uh, uh, entities. Okay, but, but in principle, you should be able to predict that. If you knew everything about the hydrogen and the oxygen, yeah. you should be able to predict the wetness of water if you have it in groups. You should, and the behavior of water is actually um, 
pretty difficult. <laughs> no, no, look, difficulty is, is for sure. Diffi as I said, I don't think this is a, something that will be solved in decades or even centuries. This might take millennia. Who knows how long? In the, case the question of, is in principle. No, in the case of water, in principle, absolutely, you can do that. And in the case of water, the, the, the top-down effect in the case of water is what is the outside pressure and temperature yeah. because those decide whether it will be water or ice yeah, or yeah, steam. Yeah, for sure. So there is a top-down effect there, yeah. but it's not a very interesting top-down effect. No, but my point is, is that you, you can figure that out. You can, you can in yeah. terms of... Lo, lo, so the question is, is the water example different than your other examples? Absolutely, because in the other cases, there are, there's logical stuff going on at that level. Um, and the, f the flows of electrons in, in well, let, let, let me go back to that computer example. Exactly the same logic gets rewritten at each of those levels. Yes, it yes, was written yes. in Fortran, it gets rewritten in Java, right, it right, gets rewritten right, in assembly, right, right, gets right. rewritten in machine yes, language. Yes, yes, it's yes. exactly the same logic gets rewritten at each of those levels. Then it gets incorporated into physical systems. The logic is still the thing that is driving everything. And the logic does get embodied in the lower level structures, they are realizing it, but the thing that is driving it is an abstract entity, the logic.